welcome to the September 21st, 2015 regularly scheduled Midland Public School Board meeting. If you would all please turn off your phones so they don't interfere with our TV feed, I would appreciate it. And at this time, if you all stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. If you would take roll for us, please. I will. President Wasserman, absent. Vice President Branstad, here. Secretary Baker, here. Treasurer Sand, here. Member Frizee, here. Member Gorton, here. And Member McFarland, here. All right, we have six out of seven. All right, next we have the consent agenda. Item 2.1 is approval of the meeting minutes from our last meeting in August. 2.2 is the following people were recommended for employment for this school year. 2.3, our staff members who have announced their resignations with the effective dates listed. 2.4, bids have been accepted and tabulated for asbestos abatement work for the renovation and demolition demolition um, activities at Central Cook, Parkdale, and Mills. And 2.5 is approval of the payment of the school system's bills for the month of months of July and August. Do I have a motion to approve? I'll move approval of consent agenda items 2.1 through 2.5. All right, moved by Yvonne, supported by Pam. Is there any discussion? Seeing no, I'll take a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? <laughs> All right. <coughs> Moving on to the next item, we have presentations to the board, and I'll turn it over to Bob. Okay, as you know, as annual basis, as we had one fiscal year, we have our annual audit, and uh, David Youngstrom is here from Joe and Yo to do a presentation of your draft audit of the 14th fiscal year. of about $492,000, half a million dollars. And then we 
only lost, you can see where we are. The year before, we spent about $2.3 million. So both those numbers went in the right direction. We're still sitting at a half a million dollar decrease in fund balance. So let's take a look at our budget. Uh, we really look close to the budget when we go through the audit and uh, you know, combine the state requirements. Um, revenues really close within there, about 0.4% difference there. Really, the major difference there is grant revenues. We budget to use a lot of the grant revenues and don't necessarily have them, so we carry them over to the next fiscal year. Um, and with those corresponding expenditures to go with those, ours aren't spent until the next year. Overall, we had about a 1.1% uh, change from our original final to our actual, which is really, if you look at the grand scheme of things, about 1%. So when you look at that, it's really a good budget. You have a really good budget process you follow. Uh, we test that process throughout, make sure it's posted transparently on the, on the website, and we followed all the things we were supposed to in that area. But I give you a lot of credit for being that close in this day and age. Year over year comparison, um, again, look like revenues still 0.9%, expenditures down 1.3, uh, pulled again in the right direction. We want our revenues up and our expenses low for our budget. And so when things that thing happens, good things happen to us in the, in the bottom line. So where, does, where do we get our money from? <coughs> The largest piece of pie, the blue piece of pie there is about 64% from the state of Michigan. That is up a percent, a little bit more dependent this year. Our local tax, local dollars, which is mostly property tax, is up about 1% as well, 28%. Um, we did see a decline in the interdistrict side as well as in our federal side. So a little bit less federal dollars coming our way, a little bit more state money and local money. Next one. Just kind of looking at a, at a bar chart. Um, you can really see the, the uh, revenues are very flat at least in the, the last three years. You can see the red is very similar to the green and the blue all looking very tight. There's a little uptick in the last year from the state. Um, again, a little bit more of those dollars, about 50.9 million compared to 49.1. The rest are all pretty comparable from one year to the next. We look at that. So where do we spend our money? Even a bigger piece of the buy. We spend 86% of salary and employee benefits, which is our people. All of our money on our people, uh, per, which is about the same percentage as was a year ago, so 86% again. Our purchase services about 5%. Supplies and materials was actually down one, and our other costs, our other costs up about one, and capital outlay remained the same at about 1%. So pretty comparable one year to the next. But again, when you look at the thing, you pretty much say everything is just taken out of the pool when we're spending our dollar. This is, this is one of my favorite slides I do anywhere I go. It's just a uh, compared to general fund expenditures, it goes back to controlled delay, first year controlled delay. And you can see again, the last three years, the other yellow is the uh, other expenditures, support services is in the green, and what we're really spending on instruction is the blue, and you can see pretty steadily in, uh, flat across is our blue expenditures. Um, down, the uh, other was down about 100000 this year. Our support services down about 1.2, and our instruction was up about $200,000 when, when you look at where you're spending your dollars. Um, when you look at that compared to 95, our other costs are down about 400,000, support up about 300,000, and in the classroom we spend about 15.8 million dollars more than we were in proposed delay when that first came through. I just think that tells a, a great story about educational funding in the state of Michigan and how it's gone. So when you look at this, I like to do a pupil analysis of our revenue and expenditures just to kind of say, okay, where are we? Green being the revenues, the red being the expenditures. We've had four straight years where we have spent more than we've taken in. And I know it's no surprise to anybody here, but that's, that's it's concerning. And when you go to the next slide, next couple of slides here, it talks about our rainy day fund, our unspendable fund balance, really what's left. Um, our total fund balance, the total expenditures is about 10%. Unrestricted part of that, about nine. We could basically operate the district for 38 days on our reserves. It was 40 days a year ago. Again, we spent down that half a million dollars and again, reducing the number of days of reserves we have. Look at it for a calendar school year, 19 days to 18. So again, that's, that's not a lot of reserves. I know the state of Michigan is looking at that 15% as, as quote green and under five is red. So again, we always just need to be conscious of that as we kind of move forward. It's hard to put money in the fund balance. And this is where you've been. Our fund balance 42% since 2011. We spent it. You know, we saw where we spent that do those dollars, and again, we're down to. You can see it's not quite as steep. We took a lot of ed uh, edge off that this year. Um, still have a little bit more work to go, but I think that kind of tells the story of our, where our reserves were and where.
where they are and to find that healthy medium is a challenge. That's kind of the financial piece of the presentation. I want to go, go into some other things. Any questions on that so far? No. Let's talk about our internal controls. You have, an insur you have a very good system here. Um, we're in contact with management throughout the year. If something's coming up, the, the bonds went through this year. We worked with them uh, all year to make sure everything was being accounted for correctly. We want to make sure we, there are no surprises when we get to the audit. And that just shows you that they care about the system and care about the dollars. And you know, some of the things we looked at this year, we, we tested sinking fund dollars, we did testing, credit cards, reimbursements, disbursements, receipts, and payroll. And we really focused a lot on IT this year. Spent a lot of time in that area looking at those. And we're pleased to report you have no material weaknesses or significant deficiencies in controls. And really, everything we looked at was very well documented and very clean. So you know, credit to the staff in that area. We're also, uh, we do what's called a single audit, which is a federal compliance audit. Um, this year, last year we tested Title I. This year we tested nutrition, the nutrition clusters, our major program. Uh, we test 14 key attributes within that area. It takes a better part of a couple of days to test that program. And it's pretty rigorous, and we have no findings in that area, which we're pleased to report as well. So everything, several years without any findings. So that's, uh, you don't always see that a lot of districts, there's a lot of compliance you have to do for those grants, and they're ever-changing. That is kind of the end of my presentation. I guess I'd like to <coughs> share with Mr. Cooper and Mrs. Lawson, who's kind of the board back there, for all of their help uh, to make this happen. To get it here this early with all the changes we've had this year is a credit to them and the hard work that they do and their staff does. So we couldn't do it without them. Um, and again, to be here this early, there aren't many districts that haven't had their audits presented yet. So that's what we Any questions? Anyone have any questions, comments? I'm pleased that there were no findings and I've got a lot of uh, respect and faith in uh, Bob and Carol and the administration for what they've done and uh, especially looking through all the numbers, uh, very appreciative for the whole team at Midland Public and how we were able to reduce um, expenses and uh, how it's so important and it was uh, it's great to have such a uh, team that understands uh, the situation we're in. I feel like uh, we're heading in the right direction though. Either comments? No. Thank you. I really appreciate. It. We we sit down with Dave earlier and get to ask him all kinds of questions without any of the staff in the room, and just really pleased to hear how how well our staff works together and how conscientious everybody is and how professional. And we really appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, okay. So we need to vote to, um, is it to approve the audit, accept the audit? Accept the audit. We'll okay, so I will take um, a motion to accept the audit. I will motion to accept the audit. All right, Pam. All right, so Pam motion, Patrick second. Does anyone have any other discussion on this? It was very in-depth and uh, felt like no stone was unturned. Yes. So. Very good. And next year we expect Dave will be standing in front of us telling you have a balanced budget. So hopefully that yeah, that's I know it was accurate. It was very encouraging seeing his trend lined on our um, spendable fund balance. So all right, can we do a do we have to do roll call on this or no. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? All right. Passed. Back to you, Bob. Okay, and I just want to add too, before we leave that, that uh, has been nice also working with Yo and Yo and, and Dave, uh, especially with the bonds, which were new to all of us, and having them work with us at that point in time. It's very helpful to have someone you can call and check on, and I've got to thank the business office, Carol Lauch, uh, they did a tremendous amount of work to be ready for that uh, audit when it comes. It's, uh, if you haven't seen it up close, you, you wouldn't know, but it's a lot of work. Uh, it's done in a very timely fashion, where closing out, trying to get things ready, and it's all coming together at the same time. So we put in some long hours in, in the summer getting ready for that. And certainly, I don't take credit for any of that part, but they did a, a really nice job. So really appreciate uh, the work they put in. I get to bring to you the tax resolution for the winter of 2015. Um, we
visit this annually where the state requires us to fill out a form, an L4029 it's called, but in essence it tells all the taxing agents out there what millage rates we want them to, uh, to assess at and levy at. Of course this year the addition is the bonds that are on there and you would remember as you see a copy in your packet which also the city collects in two uh, times, summer and winter, where the county just says winter. Um, our form, if you will, is a little more complicated than lots of districts because we have our old harmless millage, we have our non-homestead, we now have the bonds, and of course we also have uh, commercial personal property that kind of fits in a different category. So the write-up that you have there, I'll just refresh your memory, that the hold harmless was voted on way back when, uh, anybody reads it all the time, they see right away, you're gonna do what for mills? It looks like 5.65, so on and so forth. Just remember that's the original voted amount. And since that time on the hold harmless, we have to go through a calculation every year that determines how much money we can raise. And that determines your millage rate. So we can raise $415.31 per student. So we have to estimate about how many students we have. <coughs> and we have to estimate the taxable value across the county. We do that because I brought a proposal to you in the summer. We have to tell the city in the summer what to take, but we always wait to fill out the official form until September because over the course of the summer, the taxable value can change and also the number of students. So we're very careful about not jumping to conclusions on students, so we usually go with the estimate that we have. The other thing that you'll notice, and in fact, in doing so, the taxable value uh, changed that earlier estimate I had back in June. I think it's uh, one ten thousandth different doesn't sound like much, but it, it adds up. So what they allow you to do in the state when we figure that out is every year they let us come back the following year and determine did we assess and get too much money coming in or we did not get enough. So one of the things, for example, that I get suggested by this year is we took in less money than we should have last year, because if you remember, we were predicting a few less students a year ago and we had more stay, so we were entitled to raise more money and we did. So from year to year, it always varies just a little bit going up and down based on taxable value and where our student population is and how things went the year before. So there's been years we've had to lower our millage rate because we collected too much and somewhere we can, can raise that. So what this proposal does in the L4029 you have in front of you in the tax resolution just runs through that we're doing 18 mills on non-homestead, that the uh, hold harmless uh, or homestead tax is 1.7, Seven seven six six, and the commercial personal property is seven point seven seven six six. Of course, the bond on this first go through, don't forget, um, that's determined each year by our financial advisors on the bond was two point nine five. Uh, earlier, if you remember, we split it for the city, so we used to use half that amount. And so, at that point, we're just making this official. This goes out first thing tomorrow. So all the county uh, agencies that need to all the taxable and a copy of this and a form uh, all go to the uh, state. Um, it does require that uh, you do a roll call vote on this. Um, I like the date passed, you don't have to read the whole resolution so you can do that part. Uh, you just have to uh, make the motion and um, roll call vote to approve that and then we have to, you're authorizing both the president or the state's vice president and the secretary to, to sign the text uh, to get the resolution uh, and be sent out. And the motion should stay that um, copies on file here <coughs> if they'd like to, if someone in the public would like to see it. Okay. I motion to approve item 3.2, the winter tax re resolution, where there is a copy on file here at the administration building if anyone would like to see it. That support? Support. All right. Moved by Pam, supported by Lynn. Is there any discussion? Nice job explaining it. <laughs> can be tricky. <laughs> All right, at this time, Lynn, if you could do a roll call vote for us, please. President Wasserman is absent. Vice President Branstad? Yes. Secretary Baker? Yes. Treasurer Singer? Yes. Member Fizzy? Yes. Member Gorton? Yes. And Member McBride? Mm. Yes. All right, thank you. All right, moving on. Um, do you want to take this one? Sure. All right. We have a presentation for you tonight, and Mr. Jesser will be introducing, I think, who he's brought with him tonight, which is the Midland High Kiva Club. <coughs>
evening. I think we're all here. Mr. Cheryl, board members, thanks for having us tonight. Uh, the presentation we're going to share with you is from a group of Finland High School students involved in Kiva Club, and it's one that has been operating in, at the school for many years. And it's not unique to Midland High School. There are Kiva groups and organizations uh, in other schools and around the country, frankly. But um, what is unique in this case is that I don't think many in the community are familiar with what Kiva does. And personally, I didn't learn about this group until I started the transition to Midland High School last spring. <coughs> Excuse me, last spring. So um, I think what you're going to hear is that Kiva students have a unique opportunity to see um, some of the real world applications of principles of business and economics that they might otherwise just learn in the classroom or from their teacher. And so at this point, I'll um, invite Mr. John Mulvaney, who is the club advisor of Kiva at Midland High School, to introduce the kids who are going to present. Hi, thanks for inviting us again. Uh, my name's John Mulvaney. I teach economics and history at Midland High. Um, I'm going to try really hard not to talk a lot, which is hard for a teacher, but the kids know everything. I started this club as an activity in my class over 10 years ago. In the last several years, uh, these students and a few others um, really have turned it into a student-driven club. So without further ado, um, here's the executive board. I'm going to have them introduce themselves and take it from here. Hello, everyone. My name is Jonathan Haynes. I'm the co-president of Kiva Club at Midland High School. As Mr. Mulvaney said, uh, this initially started out as an activity in his class, and we've been a club uh, for about since 2009, and we've been quite active. All of us here are very prideful of uh, Kiva and what we do for the community, not only globally, but also here at Midland, in Midland and at Midland High. Right here, you can see a picture of last year's club. Uh, about two years ago, we were only about 10 people, and we've luckily grown to about uh, 50 as of this year. And we hope to keep growing as the years go on. Uh, everyone's very excited to be part of Kiva and give back to the community, as I stated. Uh, this is a great opportunity for uh, Midland High students, as well as just uh, people interested in e economics and business to really get involved and give back to in the ways uh, that we are all encouraged to with the uh, one-on-one and in community. Thank you, Mr. Mulvaney. Uh, hello, my name is Jared Holman. I'm also a co-president of the Kiva Club. And uh, you might be wondering, what, what is Kiva? We are a nonprofit organization, and our mission is to assist individuals um, on a worldwide scale through lending and microfinancing. And we were able to do this through the internet, uh, which is incredible. You wouldn't be able to say that 20 years ago, but um, through the internet, we were able to find these people, and we are able to uh, lend them money, which then creates opportunity, uh, like I said, worldwide. Besides that, Besides that, we also do um, quite a bit of community service here in Midland, as Jonathan was just mentioning. Uh, last year, we frequently picked trash up, uh, pick trash up on a road that is commonly used for students to uh, walk to and from lunch, as well as we uh, loaned out, well, I don't know if it's loaned out, but we, we gave bonds and grants to uh, other clubs and organizations at Midland High that were looking for funds and capital to assist them in their their projects and their accomplishments, so that was another thing that we did at the high school. All right, so one of the big things we like to talk about with Kiva Club is the quote, give a man a fish to feed him for a day, teach a man to fish to feed him for a lifetime. Uh, this is kind of our mantra at Kiva Club, because it's uh, what we do, it's not like charity, what we, we give out money to entrepreneurs around the world, whether it be to buy cattle or clothing or fabric for their businesses, for them to sustain themselves and just uh, be able to grow as individuals financially. And so in that sense, we know uh, in our hearts and, uh, and through our account that these uh, individuals are making the money back and sustaining themselves for a lifetime. Uh, the, unlike charity, they don't need uh, another loan. They don't uh, have to come back to the system in order to get uh, some more money for their products or for their materials. And so we really pride ourselves in being able to loan this out, be able to make sure that the individuals are making enough money for them to make a living, and then we are able to loan it out again to another individual. So it's really uh, self-fulfilling as well as just a great opportunity for all the students involved. Hello, my name is Connor Legg, and I am a co-treasurer for the Kiva Club. And uh, up here you can see just uh, some data on the uh, 
statistics of the club. And at the very top, you can see that it says that we've raised or we've lent out $16,400, but really um, this isn't fully up to date, and I believe that number is about 18000 now. And so that makes our total loans up to well over 650. And also in the uh, top right corner of this graphic, you can see that in 2013, we lent out about $2,000. And then in 2014, because of the growth of our club, we were well over about $4,000 to $5,000. And in 2015, we're only halfway through the year, but we're right around that $2,000 mark once again. And you can also see from this graphic that all the different countries in which Kiva loans out, um, that we lent out our uh, loans to people that wanted it. And right here, this is a picture of the uh, wonderful club once again. And it's kind of hard to see, but on the uh, map right there, we uh, stuck up different sticky notes in spots or locations that we decided to loan our money. Hi, I'm Hope Gessler, I'm the secretary of Kiva Club, and I'm going to talk a little bit about how we raise the money to be able to loan that much. Um, one, the first thing is the compatibility test, which we do around Valentine's Day, and it's where kids take a test on basic information about themselves, and the company pairs them up with the people within the school they're the most compatible with, <laughs> and then they can buy the tests during or the results during lunch. Um, we do restaurant nights, which is where we go to a local restaurant and. Um, Basically, a percentage of the profits from that night go towards Kiva Club. And then the book covers. Uh, so here's a picture of the book covers. Um, so this is something we started this year. We're selling them for $2 in Chemic Corner at school. And it was kind of uh, beneficial for two reasons. It's a great fundraiser. And then also, um, the kids in Kiva went around and sold the advertisements. And so it was great to learn how to pitch an idea to a business and to convince them to invest in you and that you're worth investing in. Hello, uh, I'm Evan Haas, I'm a senior and I'm a co-treasurer along with Connor on the Keeper Club. I'm just gonna talk a little bit about the logistics of the meetings real quick. We usually try to meet every Tuesday uh, after school and these meetings usually last about 10 to 20 minutes. Uh, they're led by us executives in Mr. Mulvaney's room and we'll start off usually taking attendance and talking about possible community service uh, opportunities and try to discuss and brainstorm good fundraisers to raise money for the club. And about once every semester, we have uh, lending sessions, and this is kind of like the climax of the club. This is when we travel down to the library at our school and we log on to the computers and go to kiva.org, and this is where we can search through uh, different entrepreneurs who are requesting donations and uh, loans. And so the whole club goes and they, gets to, they get to look for what people they think deserve our money to loan to and who they think can put it to good use and help the world. So I hope you learned a little bit about <coughs> Club at Midland High and what we do in the community, the globe and at Midland High. And uh, thank you for your time. All right, as, mo as all of the great, I'm sorry, as all of the great students we have at Midland Public Schools, way too humble in, way in what they do. Um, just to, just to uh, focus on it, these students and others have raised over $15,000 that they've loaned and reloaned over several years in $25 increments, touching entrepreneurs throughout the world. Kiva is a California-based, internet-based company from which we are a small part, but one of the, one of the biggest clubs on that site right now is the Midland High Cummings. You can see that symbol for the, for the hundreds of people we've loaned to in $25 increments. They pay us back, we reloan that money. And even though it's not a financial interest, they don't pay a financial interest on those loans, the, uh, the interest, the warm, fuzzy feeling that the Kiva members get from making those loans is what they get paid for. So again, it really has become a student-focused club, and they have done a great job. So um, I'll call all of you back here again and see can you give us some examples of some of the businesses you've loaned to and, and where they some of them are and what types of businesses they've been um, a lot of the business that we loan to are uh, for cattle and different animals and so they can uh, raise them 
and we provide milk and sell them to the people in the village, as well as we do a lot of uh, fabric and people who can uh, create their own clothing and sell it back to people in the village once again. A lot of uh, where we loan to is actually in the Philippines, which is understandable with a lot of the uh, environmental uh, co uh, challenges, yes, that they have had in the last few years. So a lot of people trying to get back up on their feet. So Kiva, the California-based company, is out there uh, collecting people who need this uh, this little stepping stepping stool to reach us. So it's like a little uh, mediator between uh, the people and us. So we're able to really connect with them and shoot <coughs> and pick each individual that we would like to loan to. So we got a couple questions. Um, are are the the amount that you loan is it limited to twenty five dollars per loan, or do you guys loan more than that? Um, I guess each like request that. Uh, someone may have for their loan, it can be pretty much any range of money, but you give in $25 increments, so let's say someone wants $500 right. to go towards their farm or towards their business that they want to start up. You can loan them more than $25, but you just go with $25 increments. Okay. And so you guys are kind of like a scaled down version of a group called the Blue Water Angels. Um, you don't retain any interest at all in any of your investments? No, we don't, not financially. And okay. the $25 increment number, we could, if, if there was a $500 request for something going on in Africa or Asia, we could, the students could decide to fund that full $500, but that increases the risk big right. time because they're, they're, we have a 1.4% uh, default rate right now, which, which is pretty low, but it does happen. And it's interesting because they have all those numbers from their delinquency rate and so forth uh, that we can look at. These guys don't look at it that much, but it's there. Um, yeah. But we could give up to five hundred dollars if it was a five hundred dollar request. We keep the twenty five dollars mostly because it gives a wider variety for the kids to uh, loan out to, and it really uh, spreads out that risk. Um, regarding the interest that we have in these various uh, investments, um, it is through Kiva, as John said, kind of intermediary, and we really have no in, uh, uh, collateral, I guess, okay. other than uh, that twenty five dollar trust that we have. But over the years, really, it's been close to one percent. Uh, in addition to that, we usually give uh, some donation to Kiva itself. It's a nonprofit to help that organization itself stay, stay in business. Okay. One final question, uh, and then I'll, I guess, turn the floor over. How do you guys compare with your uh, revenue versus your lending? Are, are you giving out more than you're taking in, or is there a median somewhere that you guys try and stay within? I, w I would say typically uh, pretty much all that we, we do make, we do loan out. Um, we save some uh, for later lending sessions as well as, like I, like we mentioned earlier, we did give grants to other various clubs at Midland High. So we did have some surplus, but uh, generally speaking, all the revenue that we make, we do, we do lend out. That's great. I think what you guys do is fantastic, and I appreciate it. Thank you for answering my questions. How long do you stay in contact with the people you loan money to? I mean, do you have any follow-up to see how they do? And <laughs> All right, so basically um, we don't have any direct contact and any direct communication, but what we do see is their story. Um, okay. They're able to tell the people, that are, the Kiva people that are in their country or their village uh, a little bit about themselves. And so we're able to read about themselves, uh, what they plan to do with the money, how long they plan to have the money for, when they have, plan to have it repaid. And so I guess the only really communication we have is to see the progress in which they are repaying their full debt. Mm -hmm. And so at the end we can see, oh, about a year from now, you – a year ago, we've seen that you have made up that $500 and you are going beyond that to self-sustain. And so that's really the only uh, really communication we have directly. But other than that, we just keep track of the people that we loan to and just make sure that they're all uh, make, doing, making well for themselves. Do you have a favorite story of uh, a loan that you handed out? And uh, like, like I said, we, we donate a lot of money. Um, and so there's many people that we do donate to. Um, I don't know if it's a particular story of who we donated to, but one particular story that I think we all like to share is a, a couple years ago, Kiva Club was just a few people. Like most of us were just wrangled in by one guy. He like convinced us all to join. And then just to look at it today and what it's grown into with all the members that we have today is just, that's one of the stories we like to tell. 
That's a, uh, that's a great story. My last question is if there is an individual or, or an entity who wanted to donate to your organization outside of the uh, book covers or various fundraisers, how would they do that? How can the public reach out to you and, and offer help? Uh, through the online system that Kiva provides for us uh, through the Midland High Chemics group page, uh, you can search Midland High Chemics, the team, as, and you can donate right through the online system. Or you, you, you yourself could go through Kiva and create an account and uh, basically purchase a whatever amount you wish to provide to the entrepreneurs in the world. And you yourself can become a part, an individual of Kiva. You can also join our team as well. Uh, there's a lot of different variations of uh, what you can do. Or you could give to directly to the Midland High Kiva Club themselves. And that's the address through the Midland High website? Just the Midland High Yes, through, the Midland, through kivaclub.org and then looking up Midland High Chemics on the page. Okay, sure. Thank you. I just want to say thank you, Mr. Mulvaney, for bringing us to the schools. I heard about what you did years ago, and it's, it's a great story and a wonderful way to bring economics to the students and to, to uh, have a program that, that the students are so excited about and to see the growth and to give back as well as learn. Hats off to you. Well, thanks, and, and the students are doing all the work, and they raise so much money. And it's interesting, uh, just this fall, I don't. So, some people, I don't know if you remember Bailey Rabanic. She's at CMU, a uh, Midland High student, and she's re recently started a Kiva club at CMU. So it truly is um, moving outward, even the Midland High Kiva club from from here locally. So thank you. And that was actually going to be my question, knowing. Some of you up there, if you were thinking about continuing this on when you go on to college next year, if this is the type of organization that you would look to maybe be an entrepreneur and start wherever you end up. I see a lot of heads bobbing up. Yeah. <laughs> I, would, I would ask uh, all or any of you, what is your community? What is the biggest change for you personally being a part of Kiva? I mean, what difference has it made in your life? So I guess living in Midland, we've been, we're, it's kind of sheltered, I guess, in a way. So you don't know a lot about other places in the world. And I personally haven't traveled a lot to go see, you know, the poverty around the world. So going through the website and looking through all the people who are asking for a loan is pretty moving to see, you know, just the simplest things as a water filter. When I don't even think about it, I just open my fridge and get water. So um, it's pretty incredible to see and then, you know, know that you're helping and that making a difference with these people so to make their lives better. Do you loan in the US or is it mainly overseas? Yeah, right in Midland High. <laughs> oh, well that is true, <laughs> yeah, good point. That well no, those are grants, those aren't <laughs> loans though, right? Yeah, last year we loaned yeah. to, was it DECA? And Becca in your book, we okay. loaned many grants to them. Well no, I didn't know on this Kiva website are there a lot but of also, US. We, we, have, we have loaned to the US. Um, uh, they usually have a higher rate because okay. it's more mm -hmm. expensive in the U.S. Mm -hmm. and they also have a higher default rate. So. Okay, that's interesting. <laughs> we have some, but not too many. They are available. Thank you. Very good. Thank you well, thank guys thank you very you much. Thank you. All right, next up we have the September Shining Stars. And our first recipient will be Jason Mary. If Jason would come, come up, and I'll read all kinds of good stuff about you, Jason, while you're walking up. Mr. Jason Mary earned his Bachelor's of Science degree from Western Michigan University in 1993 with a major in special education and a minor in health. In 1998, he earned his Master of Arts degree in teaching, learning behavior disorders from Saginaw Valley State University, and has earned many credits beyond his master's degree. Jason began his Midland Public Schools career as a special education teacher at Central Intermediate School and H.H. Dow High School in 1995. Jason taught special education and coached football, track, wrestling at Central until 2004 when he moved to Northeast, where he continues his teaching career today. During his Northeast journey, he moved from teaching special education to teaching sixth grade regular education, social studies, language arts, and math. Supervisors of Mr. M Mr. Mary have commented, Jason is committed to student success, to staying involved in the building, and he works hard to continue his professional growth. He has high expectations for every student and stresses the importance of cooperation, responsibility, and hard work. 
Another supervisor stated, Mr. Mary's focus is always on what is best for kids. Mr. Mary is reliable, fun, and true asset to the sixth grade team at Northeast overall. Jason was nominated for the Shining Star Award by an MPS parent. Here are some of her comments. My son was very n nervous to enter middle school. Mr. Mary met with him privately at school for an hour, gave him a personal tour, and helped him with his locker and everything. It was a very hot summer day, and Mr. Mary took very care careful care of my son to make sure he felt very good about Northeast. He wasn't rushed, was very patient and understanding. That was above and beyond, in my opinion. Congratulations, Jason. Jason, thank you very much. Thank you. In our second second shining star, you may have seen running around in here because uh, uh, Billy Dumont Oliver also assists with our board meeting tonight, and uh, she is probably running right now to make it down <laughs> from uh, the broadcasting portion of the, of the board meeting tonight. Uh, Miss Billy Dumont Oliver began her MPS career as a paraprofessional at Chippewasi Elementary, where she worked with special needs children in the lunchroom and as a Title I para. In 2007, Billy moved into her IMTC MPS TV. Well, that's a mouthful. <laughs> paraprofessional position. In 2009, Billy's position was evaluated and reclassified into a manager level with the Title MPS TV specialist, a role in which she continues today. However, Billy's role keeps changing and evolving. A couple of years ago, the district added YouTube as another video commu communication vehicle. Billy willingly embraced that medium. Just last year, with the resignation of the district's central auditorium manager, Billy gracefully agreed to take on the added building manager duties of that building and auditorium. Supervisors of Ms. Oliver's have stated, I applaud Ms. Oliver's attitude and work ethic. She works evenings to film school board meetings and other special events. She does not watch the clock and goes above and beyond on a regular basis. I am pleased to have her as part of our team. Ms. Oliver is a dil diligent self-starter who regularly meets and exceeds goals and expectations in all areas. Billy was nominated for the Shining Star Award by an MPS colleague. Some of her comments include, with the resignation of the auditorium manager during the 2014-15 school year, Billy Oliver was asked to take over not only the oversight for the auditorium, but the central building as well. This was in addition to her MPS TV, district video, videographer, and other responsibilities. Billy was willing to take on these new duties and jumped in with both feet. She oversees the central cleaning staff as well as any setups that are requested for that building. She did a great job with the setup of the opening staff meeting this year that had more than 500 in attendance. Billy is a very conscient, detail-oriented employee who does a wonderful job of videotaping and overseeing the playback of board meetings, district events such as graduation ceremonies, and much more. Billy is a dedicated member of the MPS team. Congratulations, Billy. One other portrait tonight, as Cindy puts the screen down. Speaking of opening day ceremonies, uh, when our staff returned, we did have our opening day breakfast, and we recognized um, our distinguished service uh, winners. I lost my spot here. I'm picking out of place. Um, and our winners were a little bit about the distinguished service and who serves and picks up, picks those off of that committee. So it is funded by the Gerstecker Foundation, um, and we have a committee who selects those after nominations are put in throughout the district. And this year we recognize Dave Dizik, um, who's filled in admirably um, as we we were kind of in a bind as interim director of technology, which I expect as the day slips in the crowd that interim part to move soon, so uh, <laughs> be off, be off of his title. And Deborah Morgan Stern from Paraprofessional at Dow High. And we surprised our own Cindy Young, who, <laughs> if you saw, does most of the work for this yeah. thing. So we had a difficult time of uh, hiding this from Cindy, but uh, I think we pulled it off, as you could see her on her face that day. So, uh, um, so we'd like to recognize our three distinguished service, service winners this year. And um, as you know, these type of employees are really what makes our district come. Thank you all. All right. 
That was fun to see you all on stage. Did you wonder, geez, who's number three? <laughs> the were hidden. It was all hidden. It yep. was behind the scenes, so it was very stealth. <laughs> Benny Miller and Nielsen did most of the work on the hiding part, so. <laughs> I thought it was fun to have it at the opening day, so yeah. so many people could share, you know, in the excitement and, and um, appreciate all that they do. Yeah, second year we've done that, you know, and as large of a district as we are, sometimes just seeing that face with that name um, helps a whole whole lot as well for everybody. Thank you. All right, moving on. Request to address the board. Do we have any requests to address the board tonight? All right, seeing none, we will move on. Next up is um, FFO. And the first thing we have is a study committee minutes from Pam. I will read the minutes. September 14th, 2015. Uh, Mr. Cooper presented information about the tax certification resolution for the levy of 2015 property taxes on property within Midland Public School District. This tax certification resolution will be included in the September 21st Board of Ed Education agenda. Talk about that. Um, for the audit, Mr. Youngstrom reviewed the draft of the annual financial statements and auditor's report of June 30th, 2015. The opinion is unmodified with no findings, meaning that the auditors had to make no modifications to the financial statements. A full report will be made at the September 21st Board of Education meeting. Following the general presentation, staff excuse themselves to provide the board members present <coughs> and auditor the opportunity to meet privately. Uh, bond update, Daryl Dumbrow from Barton Mallow reviewed the, con uh, the concept of general conditions in the bond projects and some of the chosen vendors. Dale Jerome from French Associates gave an update on the new elementary school design process and discussed possible exterior design concepts and elements. The next FFO meeting will be October 12th at 5 p.m. Thank you. We have, um? we have some gifts to review today. I've got a couple of different items uh, that just are for information and then one that requires the board's action. Um, the first is uh, 6.2 there you'll see. These are items that were donated. Uh, St. John's Lutheran Youth Group donated uh, backpacks, loaded with school supplies to um, four of our elementary schools and AVI SPL company employees, which is an audiovisual service provider for Dow Chemical. Uh, they donated and delivered 65 pounds of school supplies wow. to Plymouth. Um, under 6.3, we have, uh, for your information, gifts totaling $5,572.50. You'll notice that the first uh, four are gifts for HHL High School in the form of $200 for hockey, another $822.50 for hockey, $1,000 for football, and there's uh, one for $1,550 make special mention there because it is an honor of Mr. Jack Mills um, who had left some money and then wanted to uh, give it to a science and that's uh, what the, um, uh, the Kiwanis Foundation shows as, as their destination. Mm -hmm. sure. You'll also see a 2000 there for a varsity cheer and junior cheer, clini uh, cheer clinics from the Dow Chemical Community Care Trust. For action 6.4 we have two gifts totaling $15,000 total. Um, the first one was a $10,000 gift um, for our district elementary STEM program. That was from Verizon. And the second one was $5,000 given to HH Dow High School Athletics from the Fabiano Foundation. And those two would require your approval. All right, do I have a motion? I'll move that we approve the uh, gifts under item 6.4, $10,000 from Verizon for the STEM programs and $5,000 for Dow High School Athletics from the Fabiano Foundation. That was item 6.3, correct? Yes. No, it's 6.4. Oh, 6.4, yeah. I think. Here. Yeah, 6.4. Oh, I have an older copy. I'll support that. All right. Moved by Scott, supported by Yvonne. Do we have any comments, questions? A big thank, thank you to you Verizon. So uh, big thank you to the Fabiano family and the Fabiano Foundation for their ongoing support. Um, high school athletics. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? 
All right, thank you to all the donations. I even see the school supplies. Anyone who has children in school knows how much we spend at the beginning of the year. And so what a huge donation from everyone that came together to do that too. Moving on to human resources. We have two memoriams we uh, would like to make this evening. The board and staff extend their deepest sympathy to the family of Beverly, I'm gonna say it wrong again, Cindy, help me. Eshelman. Eshelman, uh, who passed away on August 21st. And Mrs. Eshelman was the secretary at Jefferson Intermediate School for 18 years into retirement in 1992. Uh, Martha Carter, who passed away on September 12th. Mrs. Carter taught kindergarten at Seabird Elementary School for 15 years, retiring in 1987. We extend our sympathy to her family, and we now have one more that we extend sympathy to is Grace M. Wiggins, who passed away on August 16. Mrs. Wiggins was a librarian at Mapleton in Jefferson and was awarded the Gerstecker Award in 1976. She retired in 1979 after 11 years of service. Thank you. Thoughts with those families? Would you like to do seven? Yes, we can do that as well. We have two retirements um, from the school district, and that is Miss Luann Sherwood, a bus driver in the transportation department, and her retirement is effective November 1st. And um, as Yvonne was talking to me earlier, Miss Viola Khan, former teacher and MCA president, will retire on October 31st. Thank them for their years of service. Wish them well in their retirement. All right, correspondence to and from the Board of Education. You can read that in the agenda. And scheduled activities. All the rest of our um, board meetings for the rest of the year are posted. And at this time, we'll move into our study discussion session. And I will start on my left with you, Yvonne. Well, I just um, want to thank Mr. Youngstrom for his presentation. He did a great job explaining everything in the way I could understand it, so no small feat. Um, and it was great to have the students from the Kiva Club here. What a great uh, experience for them. I mean, mm -hmm. they can see what they're doing. It must be really interesting, I think, to them to see that people can do so much with as little as $25. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't really think in those terms. So thank you to them. And um, uh, congratulations to Ms. Sherwood and uh, to Vi on their retirements and thank you for your years of service. Thank you, Cindy, for everything you do for us and congratulations to the Shining Stars and um, to the other, what do I want to say here? Um, DFA, Distinguished Service. Yes, Distinguished Service recipients. Thank you so much. I agree and I had Dave to that list. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, Today uh, I was able, or I had the opportunity to meet teachers from China. Um, we had several here at the administration building and it was a wonderful opportunity to talk with and uh, share perspectives and, and what we do here and hear stories about uh, what, um, how teaching happens through teaching and learning in China. So uh, that was exciting. And I'm glad we have that uh, those opportunities. I think that was funded through the Gerstackers as well. So what uh, great opportunities we have because of these foundations in our community. Um, I guess the other thing is I'll be keeping a pulse on the legislature and what happens as it comes to um, uh, third grade reading and see um, see what what's going to become of uh, all the conversations and what changes might be in store for us. I had the opportunity to be here this afternoon too as Pam was talking about it. Just a very fascinating, fun opportunity um, to meet with teachers <coughs> in China and uh, hear their questions um, that, they, that they were asking of their interpreter. And Mike did a, and Brian did a great job presenting how education goes on here and uh, answering your questions. So just a very, very fun opportunity. And I understand they're here for a couple weeks, aren't Two they? Weeks. So they'll be visiting a lot of schools and different places, even in Michigan. <coughs> um, same with Kiva Club, when we talk about international studies, whether it's the teachers and, and what young students have uh, available to them now to impact not only locally, but internationally, I just think just so exciting to see where, where they're going with the Kiva Club and the lives that they impact and hopefully he'll carry that through 
to their whole their whole lives. And uh, when you talk about gifts, once again, just looking at what our donors give to us, you know, whether whether it's a twenty-five dollar loan that the Kiva students are giving to Impact Lives, or the the very very generous uh, amounts that we put in our programs. So thank you, and Billy and Jason, once again, thank you. They do great great things for our kids and all of us too. Looks like the beginning of the school year is off to a great start. I know I hear the band and the football game. I mean, everything's in full swing. So the weather's great, but it makes it even more fun to go to those activities. So, um, so I think that's it for now. Thank you. All right, appreciate Mr. Youngstrom's time here tonight regarding the, you know, the financial audit. A lot of positive things in there. I think for me, seeing the fund balance stabilize. Um, it's a wonderful thing. You see how far, how far that's come down over the past five, six, seven years. Um, look forward to seeing that come down even more in the ne next, hopefully, 12 months. And I know Mike and his new crew have worked very hard. We've all been appreciative. And I can't, can't say it enough. You guys have done such a good job working to get that down. Everybody in this district has sacrificed, and uh, it's good to see. I think you emailed us, Mike, about the attendance at East Lawn. The mm. first day was 99.9%. Talked to another elementary principal who said theirs was 99.9% the first day, and uh, all those parents to do, that's always tough that first week, and have that kind of attendance just speaks to the parents in our district and how much uh, we all care and try to make these things work. So it's <coughs> great to see uh, the Kiva Club, like everybody else. You know, so often these days you hear about the news is negative and it's bad things. You don't hear enough about students who view the world as something bigger than themselves, and that's such a great thing to see at this age, uh, it won't be good for us down the road having students leaving middle with attitudes like that. And then last thing for me was that the building demo, I know that's supposed to be kicking up here late fall, so hopefully everybody in the public is, as we get into these things, are aware and know that it's it's coming, it's gonna be, I'm sure some mess and some rubble, and it's progress, it may not look like it, but it will be progress, and looking forward to seeing lots of good things at East Lawn, or I'm sorry, Central. Well, I thought it was a, a refreshing meeting tonight, um, an excellent job all around for the uh, financial statement and for the uh, audit. Um, the Kiva Club, I thought, was great um, because I'm part of a number of organizations that uh, function very similarly. You know, these kids are kids donating $25 or, or whatever amounts. They're impacting lives that they'll never know that they've impacted. Um, and they're going to leave this program just better people and hopefully will continue that role of giving and putting uh, the service of others before themselves. Um, you know, having young kids that are just now entering MPS, it's nice to be exposed to the to the depth and diversity of programs and clubs that, that this system offers. Uh, every meeting that uh, I come here and sit here, you, you see a new presentation, which is a great um, great change and expose that to myself and to the public who may not know that Kiva Club even exists. Um, so I think that was a, a really good presentation tonight. Um, just to congratulate the, the shining stars, Jason and Billy, and our distinguished service recipients out of Dave and City who are here t with us tonight. Um, just overall, a great meeting and nice to be back, so. Thank you. All right, yes, happy fall. Does it start tomorrow? All right, first of all, and I'll read a prepared statement because we do have our exchange program going on right now with um, China. So beginning September 20th through October 2nd, Midland Public Schools in partnership with Saginaw Valley State University is hosting eight educators from Chongqing, China. Five high school teachers and three elementary teachers will be visiting classrooms, talking with teachers and administrators, and taking in local cultural sites. Other members of the Chongqing delegation are visiting Bay City Public Schools, Bay Aranac Career Center, and Frankenmuth Public Schools. And this exchange is made possible through a grant from the Gerstacker Foundation. So we, we welcome them. Um, this is actually where I work. We actually have a joint venture going on in this city. It's um, an industrial city with a lot of ties to the automotive, um, which makes it a perfect fit here with um, the state of Michigan. So we, we welcome them, and then I don't think we've mentioned, we also have Correct. some um, of our teachers, do we have administrators and students too, going over there at the end of it October? It is all teachers, I believe. Okay. And, yep. 
so next right. month so they'll be yeah that, that will be a very exciting trip for them i think it's a city of 18 million people so. okay. 34 i think they oh 34 still. when you get outside yeah. the wow. okay yeah so yes definitely um other things um i want to congratulate two shining stars to serve distinguished service award winners um I also very much appreciate our audit every year. It's always good to go through that and feels good when they give us the unmodified audit and tell us all the good things that we're doing. Um, I very much appreciated the Kiva presentation. I've known some of those children since they were little and it's so fabulous to see when they grow up and the great things they do and I have a feeling those kids will go on and do very great things, not only for themselves personally, but to impact society. Um, so that was great. And, li and like you said, it's wonderful seeing all the different opportunities we offer in Midland Public Schools. And I know for my own children, that's one of the hardest things is there's so much and everything sounds so good. And you have to make sure that you limit yourself because there's, there's so much opportunity that we offer here. And it's the support um, from teachers that, you know, if it wasn't for Mr. Mulvaney to step up and lead a group like that, they wouldn't have had the Kiva Club. So I appreciate everyone that steps forward to help lead these clubs. Um, off to a good beginning of the school year. We've already gone and done our walkthrough at Dow High and um, looks like everything's off to a good start. So I will turn it back over to you. Um, I think you're all aware that we, um, a couple weeks ago, uh, issued our request to our foundations for our STEM strategic plan. Um, and, and after working with them, they were very specific on what we should uh, send a request in for. And at this point in time, we've even heard back from the Gerstacker Foundation, um, I, I guess unofficially, um, we haven't got a, anything written at this point, but that um, Mr. Ada informed us that the, their foundation acted and granted us $850,000 for our STEM strategic plan through, that will be implemented through our school district. And so we're anxiously waiting for the other foundations, which we'll hear down the road. Um, probably um, many won't meet, actually meet until December. So somewhere down the road, we should know the, the status of those. Um, we, uh, under the STEM strategic plan, we, we've also met at this point in time with representatives from Saginaw Valley State University and Michigan State University on partnering with us uh, in our STEM strategic plan and particularly the STEM elementary school that'll be at the central site um, uh, where we will have cooperation going back and forth. Um, I'll give you an example, Saginaw Valley is now going to go get themselves trained uh, in Project Lead the Way, one of the pieces of the curriculum that we're going to implement, and they're going to be able to train our employees, which will drive our costs way down. Mm -hmm. And so that cooperation between the universities and ourselves will grow all the way down to uh, we expect that their pre-intern teachers may do some time in our buildings, yeah. which will provide us those extra hands, those extra employees when we're doing uh, open space, uh, maker space, STEM projects that you're going to need plus those teachers' experience of getting into those classrooms as well. So a lot's going on behind the scene with the STEM school and the STEM strategic plan for the entire district. Um, as Patrick mentioned, the um, demolition projects are moving forward. We met with the city engineers, um, the Sem Semco Energy, and, and those type of utilities um, because they all have to be involved in the shutoff and removal of some of the ut those utilities at those sites. And you think dem dem demolishing a building is an easy process? It isn't, and, and it's actually quite costly when you think of asbestos abatement and all the, all the requirements you have to meet, um, right down to parking lots and mm. underground utilities and what you leave under those sites from sewage and drainage and where do you cap that off and where do you take that back that won't pose problems to us in the future or who, anyone who may, some of the pieces we may look to sell at some point in time. So there's a lot to those projects and they've been being planned and they will begin. Um, you'll see um, proposals being put out for the demolition within the next few weeks and the, most of the projects will begin in November, beginning of December, um, really kicking off once we uh, move out of the auditorium um, and central completely, which is the end of the holiday season after they do their events. So begin to prepare yourself for those because there'll be some sad moments, I'm sure, too, when people are seeing some of those buildings come down, but it is well needed and uh, will we'll definitely do, uh, suit us right in the future as we go forward. We've talked quite a bit about enrollment, and I don't think we've ever watched enrollment so closely and anxiously because, as you saw in our audit, um, with, with a few breaks on that enrollment, we'll um, definitely put our budget 
balanced or to maybe even to the good. And um, early in the summer as we were watching enrollment, um, it seemed almost too good to be true. And as you know, you really can't tell until you see the whites of everyone's eyes. Um, in the building, we've kind of did a whites of everyone's eyes count at this point, and we're still feeling very, very good about enrollment. But of course, um, student count day is October uh, 7th. Am I gonna say that right? I think it's October 7th. And uh, we will wait till then to give you official count to make sure we have that right. We, our enrollment is very complicated to figure out um, because we do service our parochial schools and we get a portion of an FT, T, FTEs there as well. And then we have the uh, ESA programs which are housed in our buildings and the, and the ESA claims their FTE, but then we get to claim a portion of that when they, when they go into our classrooms. And so when we get done, we'll pick up a lot of uh, en enrollment through those numbers as well. But I, I can tell you that we're trending extremely well and most likely we'll beat our budgeted number that we estimate last year significantly um, and so we'll see where that goes at, as we get closer to October um, next Monday a team of teachers and administrators and our architect and our construction manager and one of the Saginaw Valley representatives will be visiting a STEM school in Champaign Illinois um, this school is one of two that we've been able to locate in the country that was designed from the ground up, elementary. There are some high school buildings that have been as well. And the unique one about the one in Champaign is that it also partners with the University of Illinois and those partnerships we had talked about with the university, hence the Saginaw Valley person attending with us as well. So uh, we're very anxious to go visit the schools, not only see the structure, but to see how they use that facility every day. Um, my understanding is it's quite a unique structure. There's like 32 STEM concept, concepts just built into the design of the building. For example, the, wooden, the window pattern is a math code, and I always forget the name of the math code, Mr. Cooper? Fip, the FIP and Notch code. So the pattern of the windows, you know, and so just those incidental things put into the building as well. Um, we're very excited about that visit, and that was graciously uh, funded by the Dow Chemical Company for us to go visit that school. We did host uh, the Chongqing delegation today. I'm um, very excited about being, being in that program. Um, they, they, I had a very small part, I thought, today where I got up and spoke to them about our school system. Is, but as, as it went on, they didn't want to let me off the floor because they had some incredible questions. You can see they're very into what they're doing and uh, very interested in the American system. And, um, you know, I, I, I think they're trying to become more like us. And, it, and there's days that I think our legislators would have us come become more like them and and it's we really have to be careful of that because as um, the most of the Chinese and why they're visiting the US schools so much is they struggle beyond the remote ro the memorization and those type of skills and they're looking for well, how does American Americans teach in this environment uh, where they're not just doing drill and practice and that they're having these uh, concepts where we get the critical thinking components of that out there so they are visiting our classrooms and visiting our teachers. Um, I think they visit, went to Midland High today after we were done with them, and they'll be visiting throughout the week. And um, teams of educators in Midland have signed up to chaperone their own them around the community and back right. to their hotels at night. And so we have a, we have a passenger van that's um, carrying them around for the next two weeks. And then on the weekends, they get to go see some nice parts of Michigan. I think they're going to Petoskey and Traverse City. and. Mackinac Island one weekend and then our, our teachers will visit them so lots to learn back and forth on that and I think that's very promising next year most likely um, um, we're going to try to be in so involved in this program and it is partnership with Saginaw Valley where we'll host some of their students potentially as well so that would be a lot of fun to do as I wrote you last week and told you that uh, we were surprised to hear, but um, uh, understand why um, Susan Johnson will be leaving Seabird Elementary and a great opportunity for her husband. And she, her and her husband will be quickly moving to Washington State. And so uh, we will be without a principal soon. And so we are working on what that means for us and what's the best scenario, short range and long range at Seabird Elementary. And for those parents who may view this or watch this uh, board meeting today, we'll, uh, we'll have something very soon that we'll announce um, and we'll have that planned out to make sure Seabird's in good shape going forward as Scott's one of those parents. So <laughs> I've got two there. We need to get two, two there. <laughs> get on it. We did have a meeting also with uh, some representatives from Dow Chemical on their um, retail side um, about their products being used in our, our STEM school and our um, additions and construction going on 
when we get to those in the other buildings. And um, not only do we want to use Dell products because it's our community and, it, and, it, and it's part of uh, who we are, uh, but there was the potential to see if we could partner some capacity um, on cost savings. And so you, you think of that and you think, well, you know, as you know, Dow doesn't pr produce many of you know, the exact products, but their products are used in so many products. And how does that work? And um, we, were, we was a thought we had, and when we met with them, they said, yes, we actually do that quite often. And it's really um, where they work on their supply costs to, uh, mm -hmm. to vendors who then will bid on our pro projects. So um, it's yet to be seen, but we hope to, that partnership will grow and we could, we'll get some bid savings potentially when a vendor's bidding um, for insulation or roofing products that has Dow um, somehow in there. Dow Corning, um, the, they, the Dow rep represents, as he knows, contacts at Dow Corning because in some ways there's more Dow Corning products that will be in these buildings than Dow products. And so we hope to make the, the same connection out Dow Corning yet to come up. So that's, that'll be very interesting. And of course, this is not official and Roger can't write about it yet, but he will be able to write about it soon that on September 29th, the U.S. Secretary of Education, Arnie Duncan, will be announcing the Blue Ribbon National Blue Ribbon Schools uh, for this school year, and we expect Chestnut Hill will be named on September 29th. But they've been asked us to not say anything until September 29th. So be aware. That's Even though this is on TV. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not really. I've never been very good about. Hey, we're going to tell you all this, but don't don't tell the public yet. So that's all I have for you tonight. Thank you. Does anyone else have anything else to add tonight? Yeah. <laughs> That's right, all you chestnut hill people on the board. <laughs> all right, thank you. Meeting ends at 8.11.